Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Louisie21. I'm back on the podcast once again. It's here, finally. It's been too long. It's been way too long, guys. A lot has gone on, good and bad, crazy and everything else in between. Um, where do I start? I can't remember how long ago the last podcast was, but I've been doing so much gaming. Like It's unbelievable. It's another level. Um, between GTA, Call of Duty and FIFA, it's just unbelievable. Um, I've kind of trying to trying to make a routine of it. Like um, on Fridays, I want to try and play GTA. Like today is Friday, so later on I will be playing GTA online, of course. Um, and FIFA, I don't know what day I'm going to focus that on. And Call of Duty, I want to choose a day to play that. Um, and I'll mix it up each week. Um, with some other games hopefully but yeah live streaming and like gaming videos not just live streaming like um, I'm using the footage I've, I've done on the streams um, for videos and stuff and um, of course if I, as I accumulate more there will be like best bits and best of and the highlights from each week or month or whatever but yeah taking a break taking a back seat from vlogging just checking the camera's working again it, it always stops something, you know. Um, but yeah, just vlogging is slowing down a bit. Probably vlog at some point over Christmas. But the week, that, that week, like in between Christmas and New Year, I don't really want to be editing or vlog. Well, I'll vlog, but I won't edit. And then it'll come out later in the, in the, new, like in the new year, basically. Um, last year, yeah, I kind of did a few vlogs in and around Christmas. Uh, mixed it all together, I think. Yeah, it's always fun around Christmas different, there's less time, but yeah, you can guarantee I'll be always doing the live streams, um, Call of Duty of course, so into that game since that's come out, it's just changed everything, like I'm streaming a lot more, it got me back into the live streaming of games and stuff, uh, which I haven't done for a while, like earlier on in my YouTube career there was a bit of GTA here and there, tiny bit of FIFA, but I just got, looked back at them and just deleted all of them, because I wasn't happy with it, and like, you've got to have more of a persona, when you're live streaming, even if you're crap at the game, people will still watch. I mean, I recently saw a podcast with Ninja, who's like, changed the face of gaming for everyone. I mean, he's considered an athlete for what he does. Like, 12-hour streams on a daily basis, he was doing. And in that year, he was just so rich and famous. Um, just a standard guy, just gaming. Um, been doing it for years. I mean, a lot of us, if you're my age, you've probably been gaming, like, but not live streaming, necessarily. Um, it just makes it feels like you're, you're working towards something. Like, I can't just... I can never go more than a few hours of playing a game without feeling, you know, like, guilt. I feel some guilt. Like, I'm wasting my time here. But then when you're live streaming, it's not like that. Because you've got an audience and you're sharing however small it is. Just keep going. Uh, that's my motto. Like, I try not to look at how um, like I've got lower views on certain videos. Or well, recently, I've been getting less views than I used to get. It depends what I'm talking about. But you've got to do content that you enjoy to make, it, like from my point of view. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. I mean, maybe you don't enjoy, don't all enjoy gaming and stuff like that. Maybe my, more of my vlogs or this style, that podcast. Um, you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy. It's different for everyone. Different things motivate different people. Um, and I'm just uploading a video as we speak, actually. Um, based on FIFA Ultimate Team, um, around that kind of, that world, if you like, uh, Ultimate Team, I'm, I'm into that now. Um, before this FIFA, I haven't played it for, hadn't played Ultimate Team for a few years. But yeah, a lot's gone on, I mean, probably more, a more negative side is the attack on uh, London Bridge. That was just crazy, like, um, the amount of attacks we've had recently, it's like another level, it's too much. It's too much uh, craziness going on, but like shout out to all the civilians and like those other convicts that actually helped stop the guy, you know. Unbelievable. Because you think about something like that, like, you know, a stabbing can happen. You can be at the bus stop and get stabbed by some kid. It won't necessarily be that sort of situation, but this was crazy. And when I'm first hearing about it, I'm like, why are these guys, civilians, jumping on top of him and trying to take the knife away and, 
and obviously they're doing it for, for good intent but like you know why are you risking your own life when you, you could have family and stuff and people that will miss you if you get killed in, in this kind of situation um, but they were ex-cons like well they were, they were on, in the same meeting that the, the terrorist was in or supposed terrorist whatever um, they were rehabilitating criminals whether that works ever it works sometimes not always doesn't always work but when it does I guess everyone's like yay people can change but yeah it was at this meeting day release um, and yeah one of the other convicts that was there uh, uh, for like a was he a, it was a murderer from like years ago he was the one that kind of saved the day um, which is weird strange situation and then of course the poor victims the two people that got killed uh, two students from Cambridge one of them obviously was taking this uh, meeting to rehabilitate these criminals so it's just a surreal situation and of course they, they shot the guy in the end I mean you've all seen it you've all heard it or, or something along those lines you know you've heard what's gone on in this situation and like yeah it was a hoax uh, bomb that he had but who knows they couldn't take that risk and nowadays we're just so done with terrorism like the, like the public are too I think I mean we you know if we're the ones that helped in this situation and there's a lot of conspiracy theories but yeah whatever happened it's just a crazed guy that um as, is not, was not rehabilitated let's just say if, if he tried to blow the, up the London Stock Exchange like eight years ago I think or whatever it was that's what he was in prison for so it makes you think like he won't reform for sure um, and all the weirdness that came with it uh, uh, the weirdest thing was the um, did you any of you hear the um, the uh, sonic boom the other night it was like the I think it was the day after it was last week not last Sunday or Monday there was a sonic boom because there was an unidentified aircraft in British airspace and a typhoon of course faster than, it can break the sound barrier faster than the speed of sound so when it does that it's a sonic boom basically everyone went mad about like, what is this more terrorism you know calm down I've not heard the sonic boom like maybe I've not heard one like literally but I know what a sonic boom sounds like but everyone thought out on a, another bomb and all this and everyone's on edge everyone is still on edge so I don't blame people for thinking that but it didn't even wake me up I'll be honest but a lot of people did my parents did their ones going crazy worrying um, but yeah I mean it just makes you appreciate like life think about it because you know an attack like that anything can happen in a split second um, but then you just gotta like appreciate the simple things because that, that's what it it makes you do because it makes you realise okay thing, things can escalate quickly in that kind of situation you, you don't know what the next day is going to bring and yeah people are tense at the moment um, I, I'm probably not as tense as maybe some people that's just me it's my character because I've got my own things that I'm doing on a daily basis if you spend time worrying about things like that then how are you going to live because you know how, how much can you actually do as a person if shit goes down you know if things get real like half those people running like they don't know what to do run away that's the obvious thing to do it's human nature I mean I would have forget it go the other way you know but I was on London Bridge the other day like the other month for my birthday I was there too literally near where that happened you know and think back to last year I think last year there was an attack in Borough Market and the terrorist was in an Arsenal shirt and there was a Millwall fan and he's like oh you're in an Arsenal shirt trying to blast up what are you going to do with that you know call yourself a terrorist he just knocked him out this Millwall fan um, <laughs> and he, he got like praised for doing that obviously punch anyone in an Arsenal shirt good for you good for you but if they're terrorists double good for you um, you know so that's just the people fighting back we've got to you know we've got to be more everyone's a bit more alert to these kind of things suspicion suspicious like thing like suspicious people you know you notice them more now because it's in, it's on your mind 
there is an attack going on. So, if anything, this guy kind of made it difficult for any other terrorist because we're on high alert now and we're going to be for a long time. And yeah, two people, we, we lot, two people were killed. You know, it could have been a lot more. But thanks to the people around, it wasn't. And all the people that reacted quickly, truck driver that blocked the road at the other end so no one could go down the road and get, get accidentally involved in the incident, which is a clever thing to do. But they, the police thought he was part of it. Like they, 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 they had guns to him and everything. But yeah, um, just shocking. Like, was black? Was it Black Friday? I don't know. Was that this Friday? Anyway, yeah, it was like standard day. Like tourists everywhere. You know, you can see all the people running away from the incident, not knowing what's going on. The unknown is what gets you most of the time. The fear of the unknown. You know, you don't know what's going on, but just run because you know something's bad something bad, you know, and out of a normal person's control. Um, but of course this ex-murderer um, was the guy that kind of saved the day, amazingly. And the police put him off and just shoot the, the guy. Um, yeah, a bit graphic to be talking about this stuff, but I'm afraid it's reality. And I keep it real here. And yes, the camera is still working, to my surprise. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a situation that you don't wish on anyone, like any innocent person. But that guy got what's coming to him. If you're gonna try and terrorize people and have a hoax bomb or have a real bomb, like you're getting shot. That's simple. Like, no mercy. I mean, sometimes maybe the the police are in, are guilty of like, you know, in certain situations. Mark Duggan, for example, they're a bit guilty there. As it's a big. Bit, there was a big story and a big backlash because of that shooting, you know. But this is different. This is terrorists, like, threatening to blow something up, even if it's a hoax. You can't be doing that, man. Like, what do you expect? Do you expect us to not shoot you? But, yeah, I mean, I think there was, like, a transport police officer nearby, and then the main police turned up and did what they did. Just still a bit shocking for me, like, they shot him, like, I thought, like, okay, couldn't they find out who he was working for or something? I've seen the movies, but this is real life, it's not a movie, so maybe that wasn't what that, what's on their mind because you want to stop the threat, you want to get rid of the threat, and they did that, so thumbs up. But yeah, so in regards to this podcast, it must be podcast 25 or 26, I don't know, I don't know I've, I've been keeping it. Keeping it um, regular with the podcasts or trying to till now it was a few weeks of each week doing the podcast um, but yeah I'm back um, gaming has been the main thing like I said slowing down on the vlogging you know and uh, I want to talk football for a minute actually because Amazon are making so much money off showing these midweek games and all the, the Premier League games at the moment and whether they're, they're going to take over all the BT coverage completely I don't know but it, I think, if I remember, it was in the works, Amazon, to take over some of the football. Um, but it's the first time they've shown something live on Amazon TV, or video, or whatever you call it. Prime Video, I don't know. Um, and I was lucky, I'm lucky enough that my brother has it, so we, I started up his account on my PS4 and just watched it. Um, and of course, Spurs, we lost to Man United, and uh, for me it's a one-off, like, they played amazing... Um, the only thing we did, or Dali Ali did, was amazing. That goal was just amazing. Of course, Rashford was on fire for United, and it cost us the way they pressed us so high. Like we felt like the old team there. They were a lot, lot, lot younger than us. They got younger players in that team. I expected better. I expected the win. I think a lot of the United players wanted to prove, what well, mainly Rashford wanted to prove to Mourinho that like. He's a good player, really. Whether Mourinho rated him or not back in the day, when he was there, I don't know. Um, but imagine, imagine, like, Rashford, like, as a Spurs player, I can't imagine it. But you know what I mean? Like, Mourinho, the way he is. Um, he, did, he, he didn't not rate Rashford, but he thought he could have done better. And, but from that game, I realised, like, why they sold Lukaku. When you've got Rashford, on the form he's in now, 
is good for them. And I don't know if it will last away from home and that in other games, but they beat us fair and square. And I'm not annoyed because we didn't play, well, we, we didn't play well, but we got beat, well beaten. And that's football. You win some, you lose some. So keep going with Mourinho because it's a great time. Uh, Arsenal are doing terrible. Loads of teams are sacking their managers. So it's good times. We might get fourth. <laughs> when Poch was there, at, towards the end, I was like, we're not getting fourth. We're not getting top half of the table. Uh, but yeah, good times. Good times. I've been in a weird kind of state about YouTube at the moment. Like I said, I'm not getting many views, but trying not to let it bother me, but with the live stream. I want to get more views, for sure. It's difficult, but um, I've always had faith. Not, was it 93 subscribers now? Yeah. So, it's not all bad. I mean, I get a bit negative and get bogged down if I don't get enough views. But, can't afford to, really. And it's not like I'm not enjoying the content. I'm still enjoying what I'm making. Just look at the views and I'm like, I deserve more views than this. And, I, and I'm seeing, like, other people that do gaming videos, like, the Sidemen and KSI's crew, all of them lot. Uh, Vic Star and Zerka and Mini Mint over them. And they're getting a lot of views for doing similar stuff. Yeah, of course, they've already got the fame and they've got their, their characters the way they are, you know, I've got the way I am. But there is, when you've got that fame already, it's different. So I'm still working towards getting YouTube, YouTube, well, YouTube fame. They've got like mainstream fame. I mean, but I enjoy watching their videos of doing similar things, taking some ideas, um, like the way Vic and Zerka play Call of Duty, uh, the FIFA style from Mini Minter, even Zerka, the way he does the FIFA pack openings on Ultimate Team. That's what Ultimate Team's good for. Online, I mean, playing online. Yeah, but I mean, Ultimate Team is the next thing. It, it, for YouTube, anyway. Making YouTube videos and opening packs and your reactions, I've got to work on that a bit. Uh, but you just got to be yourself. I mean, like I said, I, was, I saw the Ninja podcast when he was on True Geordie's podcast. And, uh, like, his world's all gaming. Like, he'll do 12 hours of streaming and then, you know, get so many so many millions of views, thousands of views. And recently he switched platforms and get, where he's getting less views. But, yeah, so he left Twitch, basically. Went to another streaming company called Mixer. Not, I'm not too versed in that world. Um, but yeah, for a little while I did do videos on Twitch, but I didn't get any traction really because I haven't got the following I have on YouTube. And it's hard to get them to switch over. Uh, most of you guys, you know, you enjoy this stuff more, this like me talking to the camera kind of stuff, as opposed to gaming, you're not all into gaming. You're not all Gen Z, you know, or this generation or what. You know. So, I have to understand that, but... I want to attract more gamers to this channel. I might make it, like, instead of entertainment, a gaming channel. Um, and go from there. Because I think PewDiePie started gaming as well. So he started his whole... And gained, amassed his following. Through gaming and it grew from there. Through the vlogs he made and all that. A lot of these YouTubers today did start with gaming. It's the way in, really. I'm kind of... Started with vlogging, literally, because... When I started, it was all the, all the craze. And... I learned a lot watching other people do it, and that's how I got inspired to do it. And now with gaming as well, I mean, in the past, I was live streaming just literally for fun. Um, but it is you being yourself, which people don't get, so some people just don't like you. <laughs> I mean, guys, I mean, the world of gaming is different to anything else. And Ninja just broke through that barrier of, you know, what gaming is to the mainstream. You know, I mean, you know, he's, he's full of charisma. I mean, he's a guy with blue hair, for Christ's sake, you know. And I've seen his content, he's crazy. Uh, of course, he's not got the same level of fame now. Because once he gets to the top, people want a piece of, of the cake, if you know what I mean. Piece of the pie. Uh, they get a bit jealous and want to knock you off the top. That's what's happened to him. But really insightful seeing that podcast and his thoughts on it and gaming and all that. and. He's a big fan of Call of Duty 2, of the new one, so that's good to know. I mean, I was into Fortnite for a bit and I was streaming on it, uh, and on Twitch, 
but I didn't like Twitch, like I said, I didn't get the traction. I didn't, I didn't, I just, I don't know. I feel like I can amass more views through YouTube through my following that I've got already. Um, so I was stuck to that, really. But yeah, I was playing Fortnite and I, I kind of started to hate the game because I was not good at it. And I was just getting proper irate every time I was playing, getting over the top. Not enjoying it, so... I, didn't, I stopped playing it. Uh, I've delete, since deleted it. Like, I can't stand the game anymore. Um, I, did I ever win? I don't even know. Came like fourth once, but yeah, w wasn't worth my time. I had fun while I played it, but then I was like, nah, can't be doing this. It's too crazy. It's too animated. It's a proper animated game. It's too cartoony. But, you know, uh, that's it. You're not going to. Just because it's a craze, it was a craze that year, last year, and people going mad for the game, doesn't mean everyone's going to like it. I mean, some YouTubers might play certain games just because of... Well, I don't, with gaming, I don't know if you're going to play a game you don't enjoy. But if it's popular, you have to play it. Because uh, you'll get more views, that's it. In some cases, but... I don't go, I don't go about things that way. If I enjoy the game, I want to play it. Like, I chill out doing it at the same time, like... I'm playing GTA later, it's just, it, it's going to be relaxed, it's not like a proper intense thing, because it's a game I enjoy, and you know, whatever happens, happens, but FIFA, I do go mad sometimes, because I know how much of a fix that game is, even, even Call of Duty, like, get killed by someone that's a PC gamer, like, because it's cross-platform now, so it's just really annoying, because they're proper quick, but yeah, I mean, you've got to rage sometimes, makes good content and it happens whether you like it or not it's part of gaming the ups and the downs <laughs> like a game of FIFA where I'm like losing 7-5 and then get it back to 7-7 and then lose 8-7 in the last minute that will have you going mad but yeah I want to do more GTA content for sure but when I'm doing it I'm do doing like I'm filming with a camera as well as streaming at the same time and then I mix the footage together um, because the quality of camera on a stream isn't as good as if I record it on a separate camera and then in editing put that in but obviously that wouldn't be a live stream then it's just me compiling the best bits into like a reaction video um, which I'll be doing in the future um, because some bits are like so funny that you've got, you've got to revisit the best bits, you know. And more content for you guys overall. Um, that's the plan. But I want to slow down on the vlogs and to make them more... I don't know. It'll be better if there's less of them. Like if there's one, if like three a week, you get fed up. Same thing over and over again. So I'm changing it up while it's bloody freezing now. Because I don't, I don't go out as much in the winter. It's because it's bloody freezing and I hate cold. Simple. So I'm sticking to this over the next few months, vlogging in between here and here and there, you know, when well the vlog when when there's something big going on, you know, something interesting, um, and not necessarily everything because it gets a bit too much sometimes. I mean, I had a stage where I was trying to vlog every day, and it just you, you vlog like normal stuff, but like it gets a bit monotonous. Not necessarily for me, but for the viewers. Um, but I'm always full of ideas. Like now. It's all around gaming at the moment. Most of the ideas I'm having. I'm not thinking vlog or like review style or even like reaction videos. I just react to funny videos and stuff. Um, like PewDiePie style. Like, I haven't done that for ages and I'm kind of out of practice in that sense. So I might do a few of them in between. Or react to a movie or something. I haven't reacted to any music in ages. And again, I have to make some of my own tunes that I did in the past to use for my videos which I have been doing um, I made two bits of music back like last year I think and I had I made like little videos and I uh, put them on my channel whether you saw them or not do check them out I can't remember like when that was but yeah I've got just so many videos I've done over the years different styles like some really random some some good that I'm proud of some that I'm embarrassed about and some that I've since deleted or copyright, copyright has forced me to, and I've private, 
privated them or untight, you know, what's it called? When you click on the thing here, and it, yeah, un untitled, unlisted. When you make a video unlisted, you know, just because of copyright, there's no point having it public if no one can watch it. Um, but yeah, YouTube's annoying with copyright. I had a few copyright strikes recently, much to my annoyance. I mean, leave me alone, YouTube. Like, can't I just, can't we just get along, you know? Can't I just make my videos? I mean, I'm only little, you know? What, 93 of us? Come on. You know, have some, some decency with YouTube, man. Stop just copyright striking everything. But that, that's it. That's what we've got to deal with with YouTube. I mean, when another platform comes along, a lot of people will be switching, but it'd be difficult to carry the viewers with you. It depends how famous you are already. Um, but yeah, I mean, this boxing match that was on TV between KSI and Logan Paul, it changed everything. And YouTube's different now, I don't know. Like, a lot of people become famous from that, or became become more popular or less popular as a result of that fight on both sides. Um, and yeah, I'm watching a lot more KSI related videos, Sidemen videos, since that. I mean, I'm, I'm not like a glory hunter or anything, but like, yeah, he won fair and square. I mean, Logan doesn't agree with that. And I'm a big fan of Logan too. And I wanted Logan to win, but things have changed. And I saw how humble JJ was at the end. And how they made peace. So respect to both guys. I mean, I know Logan's getting a lot less views on his podcast. I haven't watched one of his podcasts. Really because I haven't liked the guests. And half of the stuff, I know what he's talking about, you know. Um, it's repetitive sometimes. Or no disrespect, you know. Um, Minnie has a better guest, I'll be on there. Um, he hasn't made vlogs, doesn't make vlogs anymore. Um, but he's got, you've got to laugh at yourself, you know, a bit of a, he's a bit of a meme now. It's not as big as a meme as I thought it would be, as JJ or KSI said. Um, but yeah, um, definitely watching a lot more of their content. Like, for, after the first fight, or building up to the first fight, I didn't like JJ at all, I knew of him, I watched their videos before, and then I started to hate him a bit, all the things he said. But I realised it's all fake. I said that from the first fight, it's all like, probably friends, like, well, they're kind of not really friends because of the way the fight ended. Like Logan with the, the points he got deducted and all that. So whether they're friends or they're going to make videos together, I don't know, but that would be great. If they do content together, it'd just be, it'll help Logan. KSI don't need the help, to be honest. Um, he's just thriving off this. And he said he would have content for years. Runs out of ideas, he can just go back to the fight, react to the fight again. And I'm sure he will before, before, before long, you know. If he hasn't already reacted to all the memes and the, the Reddit and everything. But yeah, I'm enjoying this gaming, kind of. And as much as I've said that talking to you guys is like therapy and this helps, but I can't like dump everything on you guys because you're just... Your viewers, you know, it's not it's not fair in that sense. Like some people think they can just say everything to that to a camera and then it's fine. But that's how issues start with some people, like they take it too far. Um, you've got to draw a line, you know, talk about real stuff but like keep some of your private stuff private because then you just get other people involved and it's unnecessary. And then you get YouTubers crying on camera like talking about things they've been through, yeah fine. But like You've got to draw a line because see a real therapist, you know. Don't, don't, a camera is not always the best way to alleviate stress. I find it does help. Like in general, just cheers me up, you know, or just like puts me in good spirits, a bit of banter, you know. Live streaming, of course, you're gaming at the same time. So you're multitasking. It's a bit different. I need to work on my like skills of like presenting. Not presenting, but like carry on talking when I'm gaming because I end up going silent and that's not what you want, you know, that's a big mistake the minute you go quiet and you're not talking you're just gaming or you're just mumbling to yourself and like getting proper eye rate, you've got to have that that banter in there you've got to have the banter, I mean and you, you end up meeting people online that like sometimes like, whoa, back away, like I don't want to know you, you're weird, like get off my mic 
you know, or they, or they're like, are you, like the other day there was a guy that was like, oh, you must be a YouTuber then, because I can tell the way you're talking and all that, because they, obviously they can hear you when you're on the mic, that's the only thing that's a bit annoying sometimes, you get the odd weirdo, but some, most of the time it's alright, we get guys that's got attitude, on Call of Duty they'll be like on the other team, like I was calling you a camper or whatever, just because, you know, maybe you killed them or they killed you, you know. It's, it's a violent game, so it's going to be crazy people on there. GTA is just full of craziness. Random. So much randomness. That's what makes it so good for streaming and so funny, like the reaction you get. I mean, how you react to things. There's going to be that. So much craziness. But that's what it is with gaming. It's different to making a video where you're talking to a camera the whole time. And that's kind of therapeutic, but it's not like I'm going in, in some in-depth conversation. And just there gaming. Guys, it's been, it's been alright recently. Uh, I missed the podcast. <laughs> I missed this kind of layout. You know, it's different to anything else. It's, it is therapeutic in some ways, but like I said, don't. If you do this sort of thing, don't take it too far. You got to draw a line. I mean, someone once, a friend of mine from football once messaged me saying, "So what do you say on a video?" I was like, "Well, you just got to be yourself. Just talk about things you're passionate about." You know. Keep it simple, don't overdo it. Um, when it comes to vlogging, you know, if you go out, take take a camera with you. Um, I, I pretty much always used to, no, not so much. Um, certain people don't like me vlogging around them. My brother, for example, but I still do. Depends, get someone a bit drunk, then they don't mind. And that makes good content always. But they'll be watching it and be like, what did I do? What did I say? Uh, especially the last vlog I did. We went to the pub, that was just crazy. A lot of it I can't film because it's like, you know, what am I, some guy that's going to film everything, you know, take a break, you know. Otherwise, like, if I film, if I do vlogs like I used to, like 20 minute vlogs, then there's too much stuff going on and it's too long and like, people don't watch for that long. People haven't got the attention span these days. No one has, they want, they want things quick there and then. Like you watch a movie, you know, Fast and Furious 9 or whatever. People want all that action, all that chaos. And then you've got a film like, what, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or The Joker. And some people just don't get it. They don't appreciate the time taken and the, the details in these kind of movies. And you know, people like want everything quick and instant. It's not true for everyone, though. Like, some people, yeah, but some people appreciate a long format, like podcast style kind of thing where it's just people talking about everyday stuff, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's different to, I think some people want it instant, some people are a bit different, you know, I mean, you can't really entertain both, I mean, I'm trying to have shorter style vlogs, and still do the podcast, live streaming, a bit more instantaneous, in the moment kind of thing, um, and, yeah, so the, the gaming is completely a new thing, not a new thing, but like the level of which I'm making videos about gaming is increasing. Um, it's just a random like flip of the switch kind of thing. Like, I hadn't made any for ages. Um, but like I said, like if you're just gaming for no reason, like all day, like what's the point? You know, wasting your life. Share it. You know, get something out of it, which I'm trying to do. I mean, I, I have had a, like earlier in my days, in my younger days. Call of Duty did almost cost me my GCSEs and things like that, you know, playing too much. And a lot of people just got rid of their consoles during that time just to pass their exams or something. Or had it locked away or something. Or their parents didn't allow them to play the game. Things like that. Uh, I've been through all that. I mean, obviously as you get older, you get more mature, you realise what's important to your own life and that you don't want to waste your time just sitting around playing video games, you know. But I think that's how KSI started. Playing FIFA and he was pretty good at FIFA. He shared a video, his friend said he should. And then from there, YouTube videos. And now he's like one of the kind of successful he is. So you just got to believe. I mean, look at Andy Ruiz beating Joshua in the first fight. I don't know if that will happen again. Joshua's up for it this time. He knows what to expect. And he's going to fight a lot harder. But so is Ruiz because he wants to keep those belts. And that's an exciting fight coming up. Well, it's tomorrow. For me, it's tomorrow. By the time you're watching this, probably really seen the fight. 
and know what's going on. And you're probably just laughing at what I'm saying about what's going to happen in the fight. But I'm definitely going to watch it. Can't wait for that. I mean, since this Logan KSI fight, I've gotten into boxing in general now a lot more. I mean, I liked UFC kind of, you know, when McGregor was in his prime and all that. But yeah, it's really got me into boxing, of course. I've always liked the Rocky movies. You probably don't know what they are if you're a bit younger than me. Um, Sylvester Stallone, anyway. Like, got a lot of people into boxing with those movies. And, yeah, I kind of knew about, my, about things within boxing. Mike Tyson, everyone knows Mike Tyson, even outside of boxing. Um, but, you know, Muhammad Ali, all of his quotes, seen a lot of them, you know. Some of the legends in boxing over the years. David Hay, you know, more recently. So, like I said, I've seen, what is it, the, uh, when Pacquiao fought Mayweather. Back in the day, that was like, I don't know how many years ago that was now, but can't really call it back in the day, can you? But yeah, I, I watched that, and that was the first fight I watched, and that was terrible, and I, I was like, why is this rubbish? And since then, I've just started to love the sport, since this whole YouTube boxing. Even though they're not considered real boxers, but credit to Logan and KSI, because they put in the work, stepped in the ring, you've got to be brave to do that. Um, they trained with pros and stuff, so what's the difference? But yeah. That's really what got me back into it. And a lot of true boxing fans don't appreciate it. Respect. I understand. Like, I wouldn't if I was a proper boxer, necessarily. But yeah, by all means, go and step in the ring and try and kill each other. Um, respect to anyone who's willing to fight in that way, like in the ring. It's, it's mental. But someone's got to do it. And it is becoming a lucrative business again. Luckily, because... It was on a decline. And this Joshua Ruiz fight, and then hopefully Wilder Fury, and one day Fury Joshua, hopefully. Or Joshua Wilder. Um, Want to see those kind of fights. And the rules may be a bit harder to understand, um, but I'll get there. Some sports I just can't watch, like golf, I can't watch golf. Um, snooker, no. You know, so... <laughs> It's a lot more exciting, it's, it's a fight. You can't play boxing. It's a fight, is what it is. And that's it. And it's like primal instinct to fight. But yeah, I'm going off topic here, aren't I? But yeah, so gaming is a new thing for me. Um, vlogging a bit less. Hopefully over Christmas I'll do some. I'll definitely vlog when I put up the tree. Um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Thank you for joining me once again. I don't know how long we've been going, probably... Like 45 minutes, this is shorter than other podcasts I've done. Um, but yeah, just uploading a video now. Probably already seen that as the FIFA one, Ultimate Team. Um, there was a game 8 7. I want, uh, I've, well, I'll tell you in the video, you'll see in the video. I'm not going to spoil it, I probably have already though. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. It's been amazing, it's been wonderful, it's been awesome. Um, stay up, stay humble. Keep doing whatever you're doing, keep fighting, um, keep living life basically, and just don't take it too seriously. Um, with all the negative stuff that's going on, just try and be light hearted, you know. All these politicians being mugs, um, people not knowing who to vote for. I might vote, I might not, I don't know. Um, people say, oh yeah, but you won't get a say if you don't vote, but either way, they're all liars anyway. But yeah, I'm trying to keep it positive here. So I'll, I'll end it there before I get proper angry about these, these two clowns trying to take over the world, you know. But yeah, guys, thank you once again. I've been your host, Louise21, and I am out of here.